Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now you may be looking at this slightly overweight British man and wondering where is the footage of the tiny PC as promised in the thumbnail. Well, prepare yourselves for the big reveal. Today's tested system was in my pocket the whole time. This little Minisforum EM680 here must require one beast of a power brick, right? Well, actually, it's powered by this single cable and this adapter plug. It features the 8-core 16-thread Ryzen 7 6800U, and this model has been configured with 16 gigs of 6400MHz LPDDR5 and a PCIe 4.0 512GB M2 SSD. Windows 11 comes installed as well, and at the time of upload, this one as configured costs 399 here in the UK. My initial concern with this thing was the noise, but I've been using it for about a week now and found that it emits a gentle hum whether idling or under load. In fact, when I'm sitting here with the windows open, the noise of birdsong drowns out the slight whirring of the little topside fan and the even smaller fan underneath. As with my other mini PC reviews, I have been using this whenever I can prior to uploading the video. The main job of this one has been to record footage from my main PC using OBS, something that can produce some unfavorable and stuttery results with lower power computers. This one has been solid. The past few videos on the channel have all been created in some way thanks to this little system which takes up less space on my desk than the mouse plugged into it. When you consider that there is no gargantuan power brick either, then the main selling point certainly becomes this little thing's footprint in both the physical sense and in terms of power consumption. We can mess about with TDP and other thermal controls in the BIOS, but I found that this generally consumes between 12 and 20 watts of power depending on the task. We can actually set it as low as 15 watts manually, and it's still up to the challenge of recording 1080p 60fps footage when hooked up to my Elgato HD 60S+. This got me wondering about potential gaming performance. I'd definitely recommend something else from within Minis Forum's lineup if gaming without a discrete graphics card is more your cup of tea something with a beefier processor, but I couldn't help but wonder what results we could expect when this thing is configured to just sip power. Less power than most household appliances, I believe. Correct me if that's completely wrong. There's no denying that it is best suited to the world of esports titles and older releases as it can and will hit at least 60fps in those online competitive games. I spent the best part of yesterday afternoon playing Apex Legends, Fortnite and CSGO and while the visual settings were turned down along with the resolution in some cases, I was able to still have a good time all while the system sat there using barely any power. The MSI Afterburn Overlay does have two stats enabled for power, one CPU and GPU, but this probably wasn't necessary as we have integrated graphics after all. Previously, I've never been too concerned with power consumption, but it's something that I'm starting to really appreciate as we start to see more mini PCs and handhelds hit the market. Not only that, but the contrast to traditional desktop components is always interesting. I also tried some beefier AAA games at 15 watts too, and as expected, this didn't go as well, but we were still able to squeeze at least 30 FPS out of the EM680 at lower settings and resolutions. As I said before, I wouldn't say this little machine is targeted toward gaming primarily, but it still can manage it, and as a channel with the word gaming in the name, it's always at the forefront of my mind. The EM680 is a solid pocket-sized PC that you could take anywhere if you wanted to, and in fact, something like this would have been perfect for me when I was living in a hotel before moving house. It's currently got a permanent place on my desk as a pairing to my capture card and knowing that I can leave it on all day while it just quietly sips power is nice to know as well. As with all of the smaller systems there is a specific audience that they are geared toward but this one may broaden said audience a little bit thanks to its increased portability but there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this mini review of this mini, mini PC. If you did, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. I'll leave a link to this on the Minis Forum website in the description, of course. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and you want to. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next one when we'll be testing out an old 12-core Xeon.